for me, the whole issue or the whole purpose of the Borromean knot is how it can be used clinically and how it speaks to the logic of the symptom. How it you can then use that structure to uh, direct your interventions and understand what your purpose is in the work with patients. By the way it fails, by the way it needs to have a, syn a syntome to tie it back together. Um, because for Lacan, um, it's not a Freudian symptom anymore. Because in Freud with dealing with just hysterics was not looking at the whole notion of jouissance and how jouissance works through the subject, for lack of a better way to put it. Um, Freud always stumbled over the whole notion of the negative therapeutic reaction. Why isn't the patient getting better? And Lacan answers this question with his whole approach looking at jouissance, um, how jouissance is of the real, how then the symptom becomes something the patient identifies with, makes a part of their ego, and that how does one then go beyond this? In that sense then, as I understand Lacan, he will say that the symptom is not a function to, a dysfunction to repair, but a function to respect. That in the structure of the Borromean knot with the, the, and you can read it either as a hole of three holes or holes of, of holes, um, with or without the W, it creates, its linking creates a psychic space, which in the two-dimensional representation you don't get. Um, if you make it out of string, you don't see it the same way, but I've made it out of cable ties. And when you make it out of cable ties with some rigidity to it, you can see how the three interact and create that space in the middle. And, and in that sense, it's, it allows for some play, some, um, some containment within the subject. I'm, I don't think I'm saying that well, but um, if the knot, if the, if the Borromean knot is the interlacing of the real, the symbolic, and the, and the imaginary, then you have some place then to consider where in the subject is the jouissance of the other, where in the subject is their phallic jouissance, and at the same time, where in the subject is their jouissance, jouissance or uh, jouis hyphen s-e-n-s, -S. my French is terrible, I apologize. Um, both phallic jouissance and the jouissance of the other partake of the real, which means that in some way this is always going to border on being traumatic for the subject. And as we've, as you've mentioned, as we've talked, where the three orders intersect, there is a point formed. You need the, in, the intersection of three in topology to form a point. And that's where we can find the object. Ah. So looking just at the diagram, you can see here there are the three orders that they do inter they overlap, they intersect, and at this point here is where the object ah is found. Normally in Lacanian representations or representations people make of the syntome, they want to see it as a completely fourth other ring. And I think you're correct in saying that's not the case because the clinical intervention is always in speech. So the syntome partakes of the symbolic plus whatever else is lacking, where the subject has faltered, the way the, the knot has decomposed, as it were. So that this bottom representation, I think, um, even though I've kind of color-coordinated everything, color-coded it, 
um, you can see that there, and it's as the diagram you have as well, the, the fourth creates with w one of the three the supplement to hold the whole structure together. So because, and, and, and this is something I think you've mentioned, I don't think it gets spoken of much in the Lacanian literature, but there's no reason for the three, three realms to quilt together. There has to be a fourth. And I think that's, um, that's what happens at Oedipus, is that a fourth is instituted. Some tying together is instituted that gives the subject a stable, a stable structure um, with a, appropriate trauma, appropriate in quotation marks, you could disrupt that structure. Um, but if you think about the, the normal subject, because this is an ideal case, uh, I don't think this, this ever happens, to be frank. And I think Oedipus is the subject, the tra traversal of Oedipus is a subject's attempt um, to compensate or to make do with the fact that the three don't come together. And that has to do with the subject's sexuality and how they might obtain some jouissance back from, from the other. Um, now, let me see if I can get this to. So when we think about what's going on in the clinic, we can pare down the whole structure to these areas of overlap, what Lacan has called the trefoil knot. And this is, this is where the game is really played. Because here you have um, the jouissance of the other, here you would have the play of jouissance, here you would have uh, phallic jouissance. And here would then be a, lo a locale within which the object A might be found. And if the subject is stressed hard enough, it gets pulled into a knot where nothing moves, where there is no play anymore. Yes, but, um, uh, but this case uh, is, uh, is a, a, an easy way to, uh, to describe what paranoia is. Because mm -hmm. in uh, in this trifoil, um, there is a, a continuum between the uh, in the psychosis, there mm -hmm. is a, a continuum between the three uh, instances, and uh, this you um, is uh, this is uh, easy to uh, to pinpoint in the clinics because. Mm -hmm. um, um, uh, we we are into the the reasoning of uh, of uh, of the paranoiac <coughs> in mm -hmm. the way that um, this person looks at me um, <coughs> and uh, is very aggressive. It is normal that I uh, that I react, and mm -hmm. uh, in the way that uh, what I see is in the imaginary and. Um, and uh, I um, I put some words uh, saying that uh, uh, it is um, I, I feel I feel that this person is very aggressive with me, and mm -hmm. then in the real it is normal that I react and I hit the guy. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that it leads to aggression. Yeah, it's a, it's a response to an aggression. I was listening on on NPR. There were uh, a, a program about the uh, the use of uh, of uh, handguns in in the U.S. And he said the guy said something very interesting. He, he noticed that when um, if you don't carry a gun and you see someone putting his hand in his pocket. You don't take you don't take care. But if you carry a gun, and you see someone putting his hand in the pocket, you can believe he's going to 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 pull a gun and and then kill you. That's why uh, that that's how someone killed uh, someone recently in the U.S. because he, mm -hmm. he thought 
he thought that the guy was uh, was going to, um, to 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 grab a, a, a gun, although he was mm -hmm. not. You know, yeah. there is there is something transformed by the fact the fact you are carrying a gun. Mm -hmm. Your your gaze uh, 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 directed to to the other uh, people around is different. <laughs> exactly exactly um yeah you you mentioned that the the um um the pure uh a Borromean knot with three uh three uh, dimensions is uh something uh ideal and i i believe that too because we um uh, we always uh, uh, are using some symptoms to uh, to make things uh, uh, go together. But I thought you said uh, earlier that, uh, in a way, it was a way to um, to suppress the whole. No, 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 no. It, it you can look at it as a hole, W-H-O-L-E, made of holes, or holes, H-O-L-E-S, of holes. But it, it is not, no, no, I, I, I'm, I, I must have, yeah. Yeah, so to take it a step, take these diagrams a step further, and look at why a fourth is required if the three realms are radically um, heterogeneous. Then they can only then then they would exist at a ninety degree angle to each other, and there and therefore all three realms are separate from each other, except where they intersect. But that point of intersection is an impossibility, because if they are radically heterogeneous, they wouldn't interact at that point. That, in, in actuality, where the object is, is a whole, H-O-L-E. Well, I would say it's a, I, I would say it's a point it's a whole, okay, because there is no uh, no, yeah. no material no uh, uh, in, in it. But it, actually, it's a point. It is a. It way, has a function. Uh, it has the function of a point, but it's um, it's a point um, in uh, in the topological definition, not not the mm -hmm. Euclidean. A point right. that is something that's uh, that 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 is uh, stuck together. Uh, mm -hmm, if mm -hmm. we um, um, look, it's um, you know that that is for people who wants to to see what we are saying. Mm -hmm. It's. Um, uh, it is the the two will continue to the, oh, yeah. yeah the two in your left hand will continue to slide yeah if I don't unless, un yeah unless, unless I, the third is there yeah unless I put the third and that's what I'm doing here then it's mm -hmm. uh, and, and the the junction of the three is a is a point it is mm -hmm. an, another definition of the point actually. Mm -hmm. So the, the question or the way my thinking next goes is that I think it was in radio, f <clears throat> either, uh, either television or radiophony um, that Lacan defined being normal 
as being so alienated from one's desire that one does not recognize one is alienated. And that person is completely articulated to their culture. They are completely immersed in whatever captivation the culture provides them. Um, they don't normally show up at the clinic. They don't suffer in the way that would lead them to end up seeking treatment. So that for those subjects who do show up in the clinic, you would have to say the, the Pont du Capiton, that is the name of the father that should have been installed in Oedipus, has failed, has faltered in some way, is in default. And that the Borromean structure has decomposed. It has started to slip and slide in a way that... Um, they're no longer able to function without anguish. And if we think about the Borromean structure, what are the three ways it can come undone? Because as I look at it, there are three ways. There are six possible clinical structures, and each structure um, requires the clinician to be focused on, in, on instituting a syntome in a particular way. Um, you would have what I would call a neurotic decomposition, a characterological or perverse decompens decompens decompensation, and then a psychotic decompensation. Because the, you can have a psychotic structure without symptoms. I mean, the person who's care, as we were saying, the person carrying the handgun who immediately sees the other as being like him and having some knowledge and springs into action, isn't necessarily hallucinating, isn't necessarily delusional, isn't necessarily dysfunctional. He may end up getting elected president. We don't know. But he, he's, he's able to adumbrate himself in some way into culture. It is when it completely breaks down that the, there's the over overpowering of the subject with delusions. So with the neurotic decomposition, the emphasis or the stress is on the real. H here, there's a break in the linkage between the symbolic and the imaginary so that there is no place for jouissance. Uh, look, look out, you, uh, you, uh, you go off frame very often. Ah. Uh, we, uh, yeah, that's better. Perfect. Okay. okay, well, I'm trying to let the diagram be seen. Yeah, but seen. then you uh, move, move, back, okay. move when, when you back show in. it. But, yeah. but back, come back, yeah. otherwise uh, we, uh, we won't see you. Uh, it's, I'm just a voice and nothing more. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's perfect. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, so in that, for the neurotic, there is no, no place for them to have a meaning that brings them enjoyment. They then, when the pressure of reality becomes too great, they de decompose into producing symptoms. The hysteric always brings themselves to be seen. Um, to have whatever is behind the image become visible. And in some way they want to receive a word that would confirm them as being that which causes the big other to desire or to have jouissance. But for the big other to show that the hysteric produces jouissance in them means that the big other is lacking, so they're really not a big other. The master who, who lacks is not a true master. So the, what, what is the limit of use that the hysteric can be put to? What is the limit of jouissance that the other can take? What does it mean to have a body that can be enjoyed by someone else? And in that sense, if you look at it, if there is something that, that castration of the master, that lack of the big other, is something of the real, 
that invades the hysterics identifications and tears them down because there's no way they can they can link this to a word that would make it make sense conversely the obsessional is looking for a meaning or a sense trying to put a limit on phallic shuasans to use the tools of thoughts to control that which cannot be controlled or thought. And in some sense, then, you'd have to say that the obsessional falters over the nonsense at the heart of sense. For the obsessional, the issue is the limit of the system of thought itself. There's always the ritual, the, the thinking, how to keep pushing that and pushing that to contain the real, and the real will not let itself be contained. And whenever that collapses, there's always that pending catastrophe. Well, yeah. Um, personally, I don't use the, the same uh, presentation as you do, because mm -hmm. uh, this, for me, is... Uh, hard to explain what 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 i think is hard to explain is that when you deal with the borobian borobian knot either three or four uh every um every ring is totally above or under the other under the other okay mm -hmm. but there's no priority placed on one above the other no, two but what what is not what 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 seems difficult for me is to imagine that uh, these rings suddenly open and do this mm -hmm. uh, 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 what makes a ring to open and grab another one Mm -hmm. This is, uh, uh, for me, it's too complex to, uh, to, uh, to explain this. For me, it's easier to, uh, to use these presentations for, mm -hmm. uh, for uh, psychosis, uh, new, uh, uh, fant fantasy, um, neurosis, and uh, s s uh, symptom. Mm -hmm. in the in the way that um for me here it is uh easier to explain uh to feel that for psychosis there is um it's it's not it's not something that goes like this it is the rings that uh part of the rings vanish mm -hmm. They vanish and they and they come in continuity, and uh, mm -hmm. it is this continuity in the discourse of the uh, of the psychotic that um, that explains uh, uh, his attitude uh, uh, in the world. Mm -hmm. For the for the fantasy. Um, it is another simply um, it is in, in the fantasy the um, for me the 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 symbolic and uh, the imaginary are in continuum mm -hmm. uh, my, my fantasy which is uh, finally be um, uh, stuck to a real the real of the object I, I uh, of the object of uh, of my desire um, uh, is um, there is some kind of falsification in the way that uh, symbolic is in a continuity. I have the feeling that um, the words, the the signifiers I put down to express my fantasy 
will transform the uh, the uh, will be in continuity with 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 my uh, the way I imagine this object of desire. Mm -hmm. If if I name if I name my object of desire, then it is going to 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 exist. It is uh, in the fantasy. There is something which is um, uh, performative. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If 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 I utter my fantasy, then it can it can it can occur in the real. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's the the white head uh, knot. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I suggest that uh, the, um, the 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 Borromeo knot with three uh, dimensions are the um, the the frame of the neurosis in the way that it is not depicted here, but it is, um, it is prone to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to generate uh, symptoms. Mm -hmm. Symptoms being, uh, being an invasion in the real, because the symptom is on the body. It is, uh, mm -hmm. you know, with uh, uh, anguish, um, inhibition, symptom. Mm -hmm. Because usually anguish leads to action, but if it can, it can be stuck uh, in an uh, imaginary inhib inhibition, mm -hmm. and uh, and this leads to uh, uh, an invasion of the real, um, uh, of, in the real of the body as a symptom. Mm -hmm. And for we we already explained about the, the symptom. Um, it's obvious for me and for, for you, but I think it might be interesting to, uh, to, uh, to develop a bit what's mm -hmm. happening here. It is, mm -hmm. um, we, we, we can explain it again. It is in a way to de describe that uh, if if you zoom out, uh, this looks exactly like this one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you if you zoom in, you're gonna see that uh, the 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 uh, what was here as a symbolic is made actually of two uh, dimensions, and. Mm -hmm. uh, and consider we can consider the the symptom as what 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 um, how the um, how the subject is uh, is dealing with his uh, symbolic by adding um, um, by adding something which is close to sublimation. Mm -hmm. For me, it's uh, it's simpler. Well, for me, I, I grabbed that from Lacan, of course. I did not invent mm -hmm. it. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's uh, for me. It's easier to uh, to to speak like this because you you got never something that goes from this to this. You see, mm -hmm. which uh, which can be uh, understood as something more difficult to understand. For me, I came to this construction in trying to look at what are the different things that get presented in the clinical setting when training students, how to get them to think about where they needed to position themselves, how they needed to intervene, and what they needed to be paying attention to. Um, when they really didn't have a detailed Lacanian background. 
So what I, f I found this an easier um, educational tool with what I was working with because I was also I'm also trying to in doing that I was also trying to bridge Lacan and that thing called the DSM that in America we're, we're, we labor with. Everybody, you know, and the DSM is purely descriptive. It's not structural. So how do you go from something that is descriptive to a way to think structurally about it, a way to then integrate or hold together both an, the notion of what is a symptom, what is the notion of structure, how are the, how are the different clinical pictures structurally different. And while I agree with you, it may, it, it, there is no, if they are truly three disparate realms and th three discontinuous heterogeneous um, rings, then they wouldn't intersect. They could be held in place and knotted together, but they wouldn't necessarily intersect. But looking at how you might, trying to find a way to think about it and link DSM with Lacan, this is what I came to. Can, can, you, uh, can you be, be more specific? Mm-hmm. All right. So I'm going to here is what I've called the characterological or the perverse. And if you look at it, the one who is characterological in the clinical picture, your borderlines, your narcissists, your schizoids, those clinical pictures operate with an emphasis on the imaginary. They, they have to be confirmed by the counterpart in the image they've identified with. And when they are disconfirmed, which can be something so minor you don't even know you've done it until they erupt in anger, they continue to press you to do that. It is d similar to what you would think of as a hysteric subject, because the hysteric subject is also caught with how the big other is making use of them. But anything that disrupts the character logical, disrupts their imaginary, they, they experience as a, as a traumatic real. And so if you're looking at what would be an appropriate intervention in a way to hold somebody who's character logically disturbed, it's different than how you might understand and assess and work with somebody you identify as probably being hysteric. So it's more a guide for thinking now with the psychotic um, there's Willie Apollon's group in Quebec and they've been working with uh, young psychotics for several decades and what they do they have the psychotic engage in the production of art as a way of making manifest a representation of the object. Ah. But they also insist that the psychotic bring any, any fragment of a dream to the analyst for conversation. And so there's something of both the, the imaginary that they're dealing with, trying to um, make, make something in the imaginary that is of the what is of the real for the psychotic and speak about it at the same time. So in that sense, you would see that they're trying to bring something of the real into conversation to be able to link it back together.
And so if I looked at those different kinds of clinical pictures from an unfortunate American perspective, I had to come up with something. It may not be Lacanian. I, I do. I won't. You know. I won't. I won't stand it on. You know. In all probability, he's spinning in his grave as I speak. But that's another story. Your thoughts. It's very interesting the um, how one uh, uses uh, these diagrams. Um, uh, the funny thing is that it's for uh, it's for good or or not so good reasons. Uh, mm -hmm. There, it's uh, something that is very close to clinics, and uh, uh, but um, you know they are uh, when you. Um, um, I've got some colleagues who um, who are fascinated by uh, the one presentation of the of the of the uh, projective plane, you know, mm -hmm. where uh, occurs uh, things, you know, uh, uh, I think somewhere. Um, well, I don't find it, but you know, um, this presentation with um, I don't have much to. Let me do it that way. You've seen, uh, of course, this uh, this this presentation very often. The cross cap. The cross cap, and uh, but this um, this line here is mm -hmm. um, is an artifact. It is. Um, it has no uh, no real existence. It is mm -hmm. due to the to the um, uh, uh, to to the uh, the fact that uh, this projective plane is embed in, embedded in uh, in the three three um, D uh, three dimensions space. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But. Uh, Many many psychoanalysts are, are very fascinated by this line, and uh, they think that they they can uh, make some make some uh, uh, reasoning out of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. What else? What What else has to be? Can we say? So we were on the. Uh, yes. What? Uh, what I have put here is uh, to uh, what what you mentioned earlier is to uh, to. Uh, to name the different uh, holes mm -hmm. uh, uh, in in this um, uh, 
Yeah, this is a not, not with three only. Mm -hmm. And, um, oh yeah, I remember why I drew, drew this. Okay. Um, um, with Lacan, we are aware of the fact that it is um, the symbolic that um, um, forge, uh, build the real of, uh, of the newborn child. Mm -hmm. For the newborn child, of course, the real, uh, there is no reason to believe that, uh, that the real is different from a sphere. Mm -hmm. Because a sphere is the simplest uh, structure. So he has no reason to believe that um, the real is different from a sphere. But so far, um, by, by listening to uh, Lacan and so on, uh, I, um, I used uh, 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 his way of saying that uh, it is the symbolic of the parents that builds the real. Mm -hmm. And uh, conversely, um, uh, the real has been built by the symbolic. Mm -hmm. Because there is something lacking in the symbolic due to the real. Mm -hmm. Okay. So these two structures have the structure of, of rings. But uh, uh, to figure this process, to figure this process, I had to, uh, to use what you are doing here. Say, uh, if, to, to build the real, uh, mm -hmm. to build the real, I need to, uh, the symbolic of the mother should do this to, f mm -hmm. to make a hole in it. Mm -hmm. And this I did not like. And I realized that it is much more um, uh, close to the clinic to consider that it is not solely the, the symbolic that does the job, but it is uh, um, uh, the association of the symbolic and the imaginary. Mm -hmm. And this is what is figured here. Actually, if, if this is a Borromean knot, but in this Borromean knot, there is um, uh, the real, the real is like a, a, a ring, and it is mm -hmm. the association of symbolic and imaginary that makes this uh, this hole in the real. But then it and is, yes, and in that diagram, then there is a hard linkage between one element of the symbolic and one element of the imaginary. There has to be at least one of each that, that, that's fixed. Yes, and, uh, and this, is what, this is actually the sense. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and actually, this is much closer to what we, we can uh, listen to when a mother uh, talks to, uh, to her uh, newborn child. Because she would say, um, uh, uh, you have to wait for the baby bottle. Uh, I know that you are hungry because she sees that. You know, it's, it's not only the words. It's not only the, mm -hmm. the, the, signifier, the, the signifiers. It is uh, mm -hmm. the signifiers connected with what she sees. So mm -hmm. it is connected with the imaginary of the mother. Mm -hmm. And it is this uh, uh, this uh, kind of 
um, of, of ring, complex ring, ring made of two, uh, mm -hmm. two consistence that builds the real of the, of the newborn child. Mm -hmm. But that would be a fixed determinant in some way. That sense would not be malleable or necessarily changeable. Oh yes, oh yes, of course it, it, it will be because as usually, we, each time we, uh, my, my understanding, each time we build a, a, a Borromean knot, we are explaining something what happens at a time about some kind of object A. Mm -hmm. And the the next next moment is another one. It's not mm -hmm. fixed. It, it, it is it is uh, instantaneous. It's uh, it it occurs just for a, a short period. This one, mm -hmm. but then it's going to be another one. So, if. In Husserlian phenomenology, he always talks about the constitution of the subject. Merleau-Ponty took him to task because he said there were durable dimensions across time within the structure of consciousness, which he wanted to then look at as something being instituted something that would hold together and not change or not be experienced as changing. And this, what you have on the board, looks more as an institution rather than a constitution. And I don't know if I'm, if I'm imposing that on there or not. My answer would be that uh, what is constant is the structure. Mm -hmm. the, the this structure uh, occurs and uh, 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 but each time in a different instantiation mm -hmm. there is new instance of the structure so so there might be another another chain of real of, of symbolic and imaginary added to that that still links to this initial real. If you were to draw another, if you left the green ring intact and you drew another looped blue and red ring off of the first blue and red ring, you would then be building another, a new sense onto the old sense. And that chaining could go on and on. Mm -hmm. But in that sense, if that's the case, then this would be like a, the point du capiton, mm -hmm. that moment of, of fixation. Exactly. Yeah, I agree. Which goes 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 back to the whitehead knot. Mm -hmm. Well, the whitehead knot is more 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 stuck with uh, uh, more depicting the fantasy than here here mm -hmm. is, i here for me it is the um uh the announce that uh the real is different from what the mm -hmm. the newborn thought it was mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh it doesn't it does not like that because he is no. going to uh, to to scream and uh, to to cry and uh, to refuse uh, as much as he can uh, mm -hmm. uh, this uh, structure. And uh, so the. Uh, the consequence for for the for the the infant is um, this minus one, of course. It mm -hmm. is uh, there is a hole in the in the real. The real mm -hmm. is not a sphere. There is a hole in it. Mm -hmm. And um, for the mother, 
uh, what's uh, leads what what leads her to do this is her jouissance jouissance mm. uh, um, uh, the 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 way she um, she she enjoys the sense she is putting down mm -hmm. that in some way there's a satisfaction of her understanding or her assumed understanding of what's going on exactly 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 and that's why uh she might not uh, be afraid of uh, a, a huge uh, scream of the of the child because mm -hmm. she has there is a major difference mm -hmm. between what what he thinks and what mm -hmm. she th she knows mm -hmm. you know you see Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for the infant, it would be being pitched into an abyss. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the mother knows, ah, your diaper's wet, big wow. <laughs> exactly. You see, there's a, a huge difference, and, and it's, it's, uh, it, it cools down the, the, the child. It's, uh, it's pacifying. It's pacifying for the for, for the child. Well, if the child is locked into an imaginary capitation or an imaginary capture, then when the mother's response doesn't mirror the infant's experience, it's it's disruptive of that that imaginary. If the mother were to mirror the infant's terror, then the the the, the infant would be lost in the abyss forever. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah, I agree, I agree, I agree. And we can uh, we can say that uh, it's partly uh, a position of the father to uh, to uh, to avoid to help the mother to avoid this uh this uh, drama mm -hmm. 